So the next thing we have here is P6, where we need to produce a computer program that meets the client's requirements. Now, the first thing I would do here is before I get into anything is maybe copy a list of the requirements again. So everything that's that was needed by the person who said make this game that does this and does that just copy a list of it do a bullet pointed list at the very top so that you know what you're going to be programming for now this screenshot was taken directly from the spec let me zoom in a bit more so taken directly from the spec so you guys can feel free to go to the spec and look for part c1 so it says software solution development and here i've got i could have joined p6 and m3 because p6 is produce a computer program and m3 was optimize the computer program so people tend to produce and optimize at the same time i don't suggest you do that i suggest you do p6 first which is produce a computer program don't leave any bugs in there where it crashes but leave some things in there where it's not perfect it's not optimized it's not the best way you could do it so that you can go back get some feedback do some testing and optimize it yourself all right, so it says Python, let's go. Use your pseudocode and or flowchart to help you. So this is where you're supposed to use what you've designed and put it into actual practice. You're supposed to implement it, develop it, actually do it. So you refer to your plan. Are you going to use what you said? So whatever you're actually going to do, you do it here. So you could have a sentence that mentions that I've actually opted to use PyCharm because it has better code completion, better documentation, more helpful features. I've opted to use the online Ripple website because it saves my work automatically. Whatever your reason is, put it here. I would also do one section at a time. Um, so the sections that I came up with generally were outputs to introduce a program. So stuff like print, welcome to the most amazing game in the world. There are going to be 10 games played. The games are bam, 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 bam. That's it. The next would be to get user input. And again, this is super, super simplified. But what does get user input actually mean? So you would say, welcome to the game. And then you would say, OK, team one, would you like to be a person or would you like to be a team of people? And the person would type in, I think for mine, I put T for team and P for person. And then you play the game and you record the score. So these are the main sections that I would have in my program. You can do something similar, do whatever you think is best, but I would do one section at a time, as in program one section at a time. And then at the very end, if you have one team fully, fully, fully working with everything, you copy that four or five times to make sure you have the amount of stuff you need. So what's next? I would then copy the entire code into your document or a section at a time. So as I mentioned, I would copy the entire code first and then I would break it down into sections or there's nothing wrong with breaking it down into sections and saying, okay, so this part of the code introduces the game as a whole. This part of the code gets the user input from all the teams, all the names, if they're a person or a team, all of that stuff. This part of the code actually plays the first game and allocates the, the scores to a single person or a team, whatever the case is. That's what I would do personally. And I would explain each major section with either comments or a text under the screenshot. So let's just say, I think I have my code open somewhere. Uh, one second, unit four. I have it here called code. Let me just open it quickly. Let's just say for argument's sake, uh, let me just grab this part here. So this is a function. I'm not going to explain that all of it, but let's say I grab this part here, right? Screenshotted it, went back to my Word document and I pasted it, let's say here. You could just explain what this is actually doing. And the reason I wouldn't do anything else but explain what's happening is when you come to optimize your code, it does actually mention annotated code here. So I would not, weirdly enough, this is very strange, I know, don't make the code perfect the first time around. So don't put any comments in. I could have easily put a comment in here that says, uh, create function to do X thing, right? And I could explain every single line like I normally do, but I'm not gonna do that here. I'm gonna leave that for M3, where it actually says I need to annotate my code. So. Uh, paste the code here. Do not make it too perfect. As I've mentioned, it needs to be non-efficient, non-commented, maybe not even using function because functions is a really nice way to program as well. Do not make it optimized here. Only produce what needs to be done and then go back and make small tweaks to it. Now, there's going to be no feasible way for me to show you my entire code and explain it in a five, 10 minute video. So I'm just going to try and explain the main sections. I import my stuff at the top. So these are the the features I need for my program, import that at the top. These are all my teams, team one to five, team one to five, all the scores are here. 
these are team attributes i would say now we could do this in object orientation but we're never ever going to touch that on this course so keep it simple and i say copy this for each all that means is copy this for each team so when i actually make team one perfect and everything works for team one I'm going to copy all of this stuff for team one and copy it and paste it for team two, three, four, team five, and just make sure that everything's working okay. I have two functions here. I wouldn't recommend you guys using functions just yet. I would program this just a normal way first, no functions, just so that when you come to optimize your code, you can say, well, I stuck it in functions that made it more efficient because if a, if a section of the code does not need to be run, it doesn't get there because it's, it's, it's locked in a function, right? And it's only when you call that function that that part will ever, ever be run. So this is my function here. I welcome the people to the team. Feel free to pause this video and have a look at what I've done. Everything works so far. I am going to run this. I had micro Python running earlier, so let me change that to local Python 3. Everything here seems to work fine when I run it. So what I'm going to do is simply run the program and show you guys what happens because this is going to be very long to explain, right? So I'm going to press, uh, I think it's F5 for me. Let me drag this window up a bit so we can see what's going on. It says, welcome to the most amazing quiz game ever. Teams can be a blah, 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 blah. It gives me the names of all the games. Team one, are you a team or are you a single person? It says T for team or P for person. Now I'm going to, I'm not going to enter either of these. I'm going to, I'm going to enter A. See what happens. Enter A. Oh, you can only enter T for team or P for a single person. Okay. Let's enter B. Oh, same thing. Let's enter one. Let's enter two. Let's enter Q. Let's just press enter. Oh, so this is one of the things I did as well. This can be an infinite while loop where if the person doesn't enter what you want, you make sure that they have to enter it before they continue. So I'm going to say this is going to be a person. All right. I'm going to press P. It's going to say enter a single name. So it tells me team one is a person. Enter a single name. I'm going to put Bob the builder as one thing. No spaces. It doesn't really matter. It takes spaces as well. Press enter. Uh, the names are Bob the Builder. Are you okay to continue? Or I can press one to continue. Or if I wanted to make a change, I can press two. So let's press three. Let's see what happens. It might crash here. Actually, I don't think I check for this one. No, it doesn't actually. Four G. Oh yeah, it does crash. So I didn't finish everything, but I just wanted to show you guys roughly what you would do. And after you've programmed everything for Team One, Two, Three, Four, Five, I will copy the entire thing. So to highlight everything, click somewhere. And you can either drag your mouse up or you can press control, hold it down and tap on the A key on the keyboard. That's going to highlight every single thing. And then control again and C to copy. Going to go back to your document and somewhere you're going to paste your entire thing. So I think mine was down here. So let's just say for argument's sake, I pasted it here. It's going to be very, very long. So you guys just make sure you paste it in a sensible place and maybe leave your comments in. For the second part, do not put comments in yet for P6. Leave comments for optimize. So that's why I left all my comments out. And that's it. That's all I would do for developing the software. So go through, make a list of all the things that you need to do. So that's what I did here. Get um, outputs to in introduce the game. That was definitely there for me. Get user input. That was definitely there for me. I didn't get to play the games because obviously I crashed the program. But in any case, just follow your process. Get to the end. Paste your code here. And that's it your code not every single thing that they required um, has to work most of it should be there ideally but if you can't get something working that's fine so if you said for example you know what i'm going to do a graphical user interface that um, uh, the program will talk to people and tell them what to enter and read everything out loud that is 100 percent possible but if you don't get to that stage say i wasn't able to do this because of time i wasn't able to do this because of a lack of knowledge so hopefully that was useful thanks for watching Good luck.